Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we're tackling a problem that a lot of people are probably running into in that HP Pavilion gaming PCs, as well as Dell G5 gaming PCs, and these would be the desktop varieties of these two lineups, have some serious flaws. And if you find them on a good deal, like a steep discount, you can actually pick yourself up at a reasonable cost, a gaming PC, but you're also picking up all the flaws of the design. So today I'm gonna go over how to fix these design flaws and turn your pre-built gaming PC into a custom gaming PC for minimal cost. So let's hop right into that. So to get started, let's assume you have an HP Pavilion or a Dell G5. Both PCs have the exact same set of flaws. The first one is their case has absolutely no airflow whatsoever. So uh, that's actually probably okay because you can't really put upgrades into the case anyways, but uh, all the components inside those chassis are gonna run warm. And while some of those components are likely running well within spec, Cooler temperatures are always good for your components, but that alone isn't the major flaw with these systems. I could get over some poor airflow with worse than normal temperatures, possibly a tiny bit of thermal throttling at the very high end of demanding games. I could get over all that if it wasn't for the other flaws with the systems. The biggest flaw for me is actually with the motherboard, and there's two major flaws with the motherboards on these systems. The first one is the overclocking options for Ryzen systems especially is just completely limited. Like you're not gonna be able to get the most out of your Ryzen CPUs or APUs with the Dell G5 motherboard or with an HP Pavilion motherboard. And the other major flaw with the motherboards is that they can't really be transferred to another case and that's because the front IO is attached to the motherboard itself. Like it's a non-standard motherboard. So Dell and HP have both gone the same route here where the front IO is attached to the motherboard and they have completely proprietaryized everything they possibly could with these systems to make it really difficult for the end user to upgrade. So those are gonna have to go. Unfortunately, that's also gonna kick out the CPU cooler because AMD coolers for these systems use uh, non-standard mounting. And then even on the Intel side, if they do use the same mounting holes as an Intel motherboard, unfortunately, the actual mount itself is generally speaking a pass-through to the case where the cooler will actually be mounted to the chassis. So, uh, you know, take a look at your own system if that's you, but I'm pretty sure those coolers, generally speaking, actually mount to the case itself not to a backplate. So fingers crossed it is a backplate. Regardless, that knocks out most of the major upgrades, but the last upgrade I do wanna mention is the power supply because these systems both use proprietary power supplies. They don't use the 12 volt only standard that's pretty much brand new at this point. They don't use the old standby ATX standard that has the uh, all the 3.3 volts, the five volts, as well as 24 pin ATX connector, as well as that EPS connector. Like the power supplies on these systems are completely non-standard so those have to be replaced as well but the basic principle of this is going to be that you're going to remove everything from these systems and the components you're going to save are going to be the gpu the cpu you're going to save the storage as well as the ram and with those four components saved, pretty much everything else is gonna be replaced when you actually do this upgrade or this fix. Now, of course, the good news with this is the most expensive components are the ones that you're able to keep around. The CPU and the GPU are both components you can totally reuse, whether you have an Intel system or an AMD system. But the first step is gonna be to actually buy into the platform that you need. If you're on the AMD side, you have a little bit more flexibility, which is why I strongly prefer AMD systems right now. And that's because if you have even a 5,000 generation CPU, you can actually buy a B450 or an X470 motherboard in most cases, though you're gonna wanna check that website of the motherboard manufacturer to make sure the motherboard you purchase actually does support the CPU that you have. But I would recommend getting a B550 motherboard just because you're getting yourself on the most modern B series motherboard that AMD has to offer. You're gonna get Gen 4 PCIe support. So you might as well go with B550, especially because you're not really saving much money by dropping down to B450. Regardless, the motherboard that you're gonna wanna buy is probably gonna cost you a little bit under $100. I'll link down below some uh, upgrade uh, recommendations, I'll call it, 
for these parts, by the way. So with the motherboard out of the way, you're gonna need a new case. Now, I recommend a micro ATX enclosure, but you are absolutely welcome to go ahead and grab a mid tower full ATX enclosure or just a giant full tower. You know, uh, micro ATX motherboards are going to be able to fit in pretty much anything micro ATX and up. So pick whatever you like though. Since we're trying to keep everything on a budget, I like to stay in that 50-ish dollar price range because if you get a $50 case, it likely has at least okay airflow and you can always add fans after the fact to increase that airflow because um, most cases in that range are actually gonna give you some airflow to work with compared to the completely closed off front of the HP Pavilion and the G5. But with that being said, again, pick whatever you like and whatever your eye says looks good. And now we're gonna move on to the power supply, which is actually one of the easier solutions. And all I would recommend here is getting a power supply from a brand that you recognize and generally speaking has a good reputation in the power supply space, but also buy one that's gonna accommodate future upgrades. Now, if you're buying one of these pre-built PCs that just has like a GTX 1650 Super or something, something like a 500 watt power supply is gonna be just fine and actually be able to handle some pretty solid upgrades in the future. But if you're looking down the road to upgrade to like an RTX 3080, then you're gonna to wanna to go a little bit more all out on the power supply, regardless if you're just looking for a basic 500 watt power supply, right now power supplies are actually fairly cheap. Again, I'll link one down below that's kind of a recommended one, but generally speaking, if you're spending $50 on a 500 watt power supply, right now you're probably paying a little bit too much. And the final thing I will mention is you probably will need a new CPU cooler. Certainly if you're on the AMD side, you definitely will. Fortunately, there are a ton of great options out there for around $30. So again, Pick whatever one is your favorite. If you're talking about a Ryzen 5 system, pretty much any of these basic tower coolers are gonna do just fine with a Ryzen 5 system. So you have a lot of options out there in that $30 range. Again, if you're spending much more than $30 on a cooler for a Ryzen 5 CPU, you're probably spending too much on the cooling. So with all that being said, you're probably gonna expect to pay around $200, give or take, depending on the deals that you find, to fix one of these HP pavilions or one of these Dell G5 gaming desktop PCs. But the process is pretty simple. There are a ton of online guides out there, especially on YouTube. There are tons of guides out there that can walk you through the process of actually building a PC because once you tear down the old PC, that's essentially what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna have all the parts in front of you and you're gonna be building your new gaming desktop. Now, if you're doing this process, obviously the upside is you have much more control over the components that are now in your new PC. You have full upgradability with them, especially the AMD systems. You can upgrade the CPU at this point you can upgrade the GPU down the road you can upgrade the RAM here because uh, the HP pavilion that I used to have that I did have my hands on uh, came with I believe it was 12 gigabytes of RAM but it was in a two stick configuration so if you buy a motherboard with four dim slots you can actually just drop in upgrade RAM so that is one of the nice things about putting in your own components when you recase these systems it gives you that extra added control and then obviously down the road when prices are more affordable you have those GPUs that you could upgrade to and you have CPU upgrades available to you especially again on that AMD side just the upgrade options get way better when you recase these systems, but obviously you're not gonna wanna do this unless you find a really solid deal on the HP or on the Dell in the first place. So I am absolutely rambling now, so I will kick it back to you guys. Those of you out there that have actually purchased one of these pre-built and then recased it, let us know in those comments down below. Were you successful? How did the process go for you? And are you happier now that you have basically a full custom PC or would you actually prefer to go back to the complete pre-built experience and save the $200? Let us know all your thoughts in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.